friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am going to be filming my August wrap up. So I know the past few months I've been combining my wrap ups and recent reads um, for specific months. And the main reason I've been doing that is mostly because I haven't, I felt like I haven't, hadn't been reading enough to film an individual wrap up for each month until August. <laughs> I don't know what happened in August. I don't know what like came over me. I don't know what I was eating or the mood I was in. But I was in my reading bag and I love that for me. It was a great time. Perfect. I read 10 books in August, which is why I was like, yeah, this needs to have its own individual video because I felt like that was fitting. I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in and then we will talk about the books. So the first book I read was a buddy read between Mon me, Monet from Life with Monet, and Ray from Bookmark Chronicles. We decided that we wanted to buddy read this together because so we all read Fourth Wing, us and then like some other of our friends. And we wanted to read more books about that like included dragons. And so we noticed that Fireborn was another book that had like spiked in like popularity because of fourth wing so we decided to go ahead and try it out and i'm not gonna lie y'all trying to find this book in stores was so hard it was sold out everywhere and then even when i was trying to get it from the library it was packed like the the wait list was so long and i i hated that i, I genuinely did but i managed to find it when I was out in California, um, it was one of the like few bookstores that had it. So I was able to go ahead and grab a copy and just like read through it. I gave this 3.5 stars. I thought it was like intriguing enough that I'll continue because I believe it's like a trilogy. But it was also kind of very slow paced. And I felt like the, the timeline and like the transitions were kind of choppy and jumpy for me but I but but that I think that's more of like my preference than like the writing I guess but to tell you what this is about this is about a boy and a girl who live in a society that I think a few years prior they had a revolution and this man led the charge to take over the kingdom or empire from the like leading family and so you find out at the beginning the boy he is from that family but they don't they don't realize that that he that's who he is he's under like not a false alias but like he's under another alias because he had to change his name in order to survive and now the current day they're under a new regime and this guy is trying to implement like his laws and stuff like that and so he's made it so that anybody could be a dragon rider, anybody could be, like, could go up in life, go up in the, like, kind of, like, caste system almost. And, um, the girl is someone he meets in the orphanage they were both at. And she actually, um, lost her family because of his father, who was, like, the reigning leader. Um, before they got revolutionized. And so, um, the story follows them as they're in this, like, it's like a training academy to be, like, the top dragon rider, or, like, the dra like the, the, the regime's, like, guardians, almost, kind of like they're soldiers. And so they're both the top, well, he's a top rider, and she's potentially a top rider. And they're trying to fight in this competition to be like the ultimate leader of the soldiers and along the way he starts to realize that maybe his fam his entire family isn't at isn't dead like he thought and there's whispers of a war happening for from like between the people from the past regime and the people in the new regime i think i liked Annie, who's the girl, I liked her perspective a lot more because it made sense. 
but Lee, the boy, I, his perspective I just found kind of annoying and a little bit entitled for somebody who, like, lost everything. Alright, so the second book I read was The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. Um, this, I DNF'd it, like, a few months ago, and so I decided to restart it and give it another try. And this I gave 3.5 stars to, but I'm not sure. I think I'll give it, I'll give the sequel a chance because it's only a duology, but I'm very hesitant because the first book was just weird. Like, it, the plot was kind of weird. Again, the pacing was weird. It follows this girl who, she was like orphaned, or so she's, so, so she thinks, and the king of the vampires takes her in and raises her, her as his, like, daughter. And he raises her, like, she wants to go find her family and, like, figure out what happened to her, like, how she got left. And so he tells her the only way she can do that is if she takes part in this, like, competition and wins the ability to make a wish from the goddess. And she, like, needs to wish to have power or share power with him or whatever. So, um, when we start, like, she's getting, she's gearing up for this competition, and, um, the competition starts right away, and they have to go through eight tri- like, a couple trials that, um, I guess are references- references to the story of the goddess and everything that she went through in her life. And so as she's in the competition, she makes allies with this guy, I believe his name's Rain, and his other companion, I can't, I can't remember her name right now. And so, from there, it's an adventure. For someone who was trained to be suspicious at all times, especially because she's the only human in a world of vampires, I feel like she did a good job, like, I think she did a decent job of keeping her guard up around Reen, but at some point, I feel like she wasn't suspicious enough. And I feel like that came to bite her in the butt at the end. And the reason why I'm hesitant to read the second book is because where we leave off in the first book, she's been betrayed and the person who betrays her is so, like, delusional. And I just don't see how you come back from that type of betrayal, like, with this person, if that makes sense. Like... And I don't want to spoil it because it, it's, I feel like people have been reading this and all that kind of stuff. But it just, it doesn't make sense. So, I don't know if I'm going to give her books any more tries. There was another series of hers that I was going to try, but Cell DNF'd it and then Monet DNF'd it. So I might not even try to give it a chance I don't know yet I might just check it out on an ebook or something so the third book I read was Trial of the Sun Queen by Nisha J. Tooley um I read the audio I read the audio for most of the most of these by the way um this one was four stars I really enjoyed this series um it's it's like hard to explain and I talk about my thoughts more in um, a vlog that I made so that should hopefully be up soon so I'm not gonna go into too much too much too much detail about my thoughts in the story but I just thought this was really um, well thought out it gave me it kind of gave me guild vibes in the way that like you start the book and you're just kind of like where is this going and then you get to the end of the book and you realize like well, damn, there, this could be interesting. This could be something. I'm definitely intrigued to find out what happens next. And that's what Guild did for me. And so this is what um, Trial of the Sun Queen did for me. It follows a girl who is, has been locked up in the Aurora King's uh, prisons for majority of her life. And she tells you her crime but her crime doesn't fit, fit doesn't fit the punishment she, that she's been given, especially because it's not just her. Her two siblings are, have also been locked into the, into the prisons as well. So she um, gets punished because of like something she does in the prison against somebody else, and they throw her in this like hole for a week, and so she basically is like starving. She's delusional, 
and while she's in this like lucid like not lucid state um someone comes and they take and they take her and they drop her off in basically the sun king's um kingdom i can't remember his, the name of his place but he, she's dropped off there and she wakes up and she's confused as to why she's here and she doesn't really know where she is and when they when she wakes up they tell her that she's part of the sun queen trials which is a competition they put together every so often um to find the, a new queen for the sun king and so from there she has to take part in these trials she has to figure out why she was brought here specifically why she was chosen and she has to figure out if she can trust anybody that's like there with her which the answer should be no so yeah i like it and again i liked this a lot i thought it was really good like you kind of go through the story thinking it's one thing and then you get to the end and you're like this is something else this is entirely something different i had another buddy read that i did i read the first two volumes of jujitsu kaizen uh with ashley from bookish realm and i gave those five stars i actually had been wanting to try this series for a bit and i wasn't sure how i was gonna feel because i love i love manga but um sometimes when it comes to the darker ones it's a hit or miss for me like some of them i'm really into and some of them i'm like this is kind of scary so i wasn't sure which which area that was gonna fall into but i actually really enjoyed it it was a lot more humorous than i was expecting and i enjoyed like the comical elements but also like the serious moments so i'm definitely intrigued to like continue the series and start the anime so this definitely gave me that push the next book i read was the very secret society of irregular witches by sengu mandana um this was a four star read for me i actually really enjoyed this i thought it was a really cute story overall so it follows a woman who lives in a world where witches exist but they are told to like never congregate together because people believe that it'll cause too much attention because it's too much power in one place and she's just very lonely. She thinks this way of living isn't good for anybody. There's also a curse placed upon witches where whenever they're like whenever you're born to a witch your parents die soon after and they don't really know why that curse happened but it's happened she receives a letter from a like family of caretakers who are taking care of three little girls who are also witches and they're asking her to become their tutor in order for them to like be taught how to control their powers and not draw attention to them so she decides to do it and she moves to this like to the island or to the house or whatever and there she kind of finds a family of her own i just thought it was a cute story i really liked the romance i let i love a found family trope i'm a sucker for it so i really love that element too i thought the char other characters like the cast of characters were fun and the little children the little girls were also pretty pretty funny it gave me a little bit of house in the cerulean sea vibes a bit where like he like goes to that island and then he gets to know the children and he kind of falls in love with them it's kind of the same thing and the children have their own like distinct personalities i recommend it if you're looking for like again a cozy ro fantasy romance um i think it's pretty pretty good i think i will, will definitely read more from that author if she makes if she writes anything else in that category so love that next i read the abc murders by agatha christie um i gave this three stars i thought it was decent but i think i still enjoyed murder on the orient express a lot more i think the reveal in that one caught me a lot more off guard than the abc murders did i'm trying to even think of the ending and i don't remember the ending of the abc murders at all actually i still want to give agatha christie a chance and i have i think death on the nile and and then there are none so i'm gonna give those two a try as well and then i guess figure out if i enjoy agatha christie or not um someone is killing people off and the guy the i can't i can't i'm not even gonna try to pronounce that man's name the investigator he realizes that they're killing people off alphabetically so and so they're trying to figure out who's doing it and why and what their motive is all right so next um i read aruna's fate by kaylee smith this was an audio for me and i gave this 4.5 stars i actually really enjoyed it it was one of my kind of anticipated reads for the year the synopsis sounded like it was kind of my 
up my alley. So I was excited to check it out and I just kept putting it off because I was nervous. But I finally read it this month, so congrats to me. It's So it's based in this world where there are witches that exist. I mean, like, magical creatures exist and all that kind of stuff. But uh, witches specifically, they... It's kind of it kind of gives me like D and D vibes almost, where the witches have like three, three or four like roles they have to make in life, and these roles signify the amount of power they're gonna have um, forever. And so something happened, I think, with like some older witches, like the coven, the coven leaders or whatever, and the gods like basically predicted that there was gonna be a war. And so you, they would know when the war would happen when, like, se six or seven um, witches ro rolled consecutive sixes. And those witches would be, like, either, I think they're the ones that would either, like, fight for the witches or destroy the witches. I think. So it's like kind of crazy. So this girl, she's been on the run for like a couple years because she knew, like they know as soon as they roll the first six, they know that something's going to go wrong. And so as soon as she rolled her first six, she dipped because she knew um, the witches would try to kill her before she was even like done rolling. And she gets found by like two guys who are the children of one of the coven witches. And they go on this adventure to find this witch eater in order to get her to change their fates. It's like intense and it sounds very confusing but it's actually really interesting. I promise. I just, it was like hard to, it, that part was just hard to explain. I thought it was a really good story. I thought it was a good like introduction to a hopefully series or whatever. Um, I think the second book might be already out or is coming out this year so I'm really intrigued. But I liked the girl. I liked there there was like a love triangle so you don't really know who she's going to end up with but kind of do but you kind of don't and the cast of characters that they're with are so hilarious it's one of the few YA uh books fantasies that I've enjoyed so far this year so the next book I read was practice makes perfect by Sarah Adams I gave this four stars this follows a girl who owns a, a flower shop in a small town and she's grown up in this small town and everybody knows her and everybody's labeled her as this like innocent goody goody and she kind of hates that they've labeled it, her this because she feel like, feels like she has to live up to the expectation. And even though she's like, I'm not like terrible, like I'm not like, she's like, I'm not a bad, like a bad girl or whatever. But I'm also like not so innocent. Like I have my, my things. And so she wants to get rid of this image. And she also wants to try dating. When you start the story, she's on her first date with a guy and she like tanks it. And the guy ends up um, dipping out on her. But while she's on the while she's there, she runs into um, the bodyguard of her future sister-in-law. He's back in town um, for the wedding because they just want to make sure the security is tight for the pop star. And while she's there, he agrees to like teach her how to date and teach her how to be romantic. And all that kind of stuff and from there shenanigans ensues and it's actually really cute I liked the story I thought the like the whole small town vibe it was funny because like you had so many people in the town that had such distinct personalities and it was kind of wild like at one point when they thought her and the guy were dating they all created a petition on why they shouldn't be together and I was like that's very a lot for a small town and for two people you don't really know if if they're dating or not and then uh I liked the sibling dynamic between her and her siblings because like their parents died when they were very young so they like grew close and they're just always there for each other so I enjoyed that too I recommend you guys check it out if you if if you want a nice romance all right so the next book I read was a buddy read with Monet and that was three Swedish mountain Men, men by Lily Gold so this is a uh reverse harem contemporary romance and um, they're actually so all of her all of her books are the same vibe reverse harem can be romance and they're actually pretty much all on Kindle Unlimited so if you're interested you should give it a try but I give this four stars I did wrong I did Monet wrong because I 
I was waiting for her to start and so she started and then she texted me one day and she was like oh I'm 30% in and I went okay I'll start tonight and then me starting ended up me finishing the book <laughs> so my bad Mode. so sorry but I finished it was great um if I was this girl who uh had a very traumatic experience happen to her with an ex and um she runs away they she like she lives in like britain or something so she runs away and she goes to sweden to just like exist for a bit and to paint and she um gets into an accident that involves a moose in a tree and she meets two of the two swedish mountain men who take her up to their cabin because it's about to storm and they can't take her back down the mountain and there she meets the third swedish mountain men and they let her stay there they uh take care of her because she i think she has like a, con a concussion or she's like injured or something and so um she gets to know them and they kind of get stuck up there with her because of this because of the storm it lasts for a few days and so she gets um stuck up there with them and then she they like all get to know each other and then romance ensues and it was actually really good i liked the storyline it was pretty steamy so there are some trigger warnings with this uh trigger warnings for um abusive relationships uh revenge porn uh sexual harassment is there anything else i think those are the main ones um, but I will say before you start the book, the uh, the author does list her trigger warnings at the very beginning of the ebook. So, and I think the physical book, I haven't looked at the physical book, but I know for sure at the beginning of the ebook she lists her, her trigger warnings. So I would please check those out before you start the book, just so you don't, like, just in case. So then, I reread Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by... Jennifer Armentrout, and I gave that one a four stars, that reread. Um, I'm not going to say much, because I have a vlog for this, so I'm just going to move on. But overall, I liked it again. Um, it, was a, it was a decent reread. I don't think I liked it as much as the first book, but I liked it enough. I also reread Guild um, this month as well from Raven Kennedy because I'm trying to reread, I want to reread this, the books before the last book comes out in December. So, um, I really enjoyed that one a lot. I gave it five stars, even though the first time I read it, I gave it three stars. I think I only gave it five stars because of the fact that, um, I knew it was happening. Like, I, I know what happens in the, in the series so far. So, I was just enjoying it. I was there for a ride. I wasn't learning anything new, so... There's that. So the last book I read in August was The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Um, this is the second book in the Inheritance Games series. I don't even know if it's a trilogy anymore. It's the initial trilogy, but I know she's continued on with companion stuff. I gave this four stars. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I love her books. I'm a big fan of Jennifer Lynn Barnes. You guys know if you follow my channel long enough. I... Last year, like, at Y'all Fest, I got all my books signed by her, which was amazing. <laughs> and I just, like, kind of bonded a little bit with her over psychology, so that was a great time. But, I, and I'm t I typically love all her books. Um, I really did love The Inheritance Games. I thought it was super good. Reading The Hawthorne Legacy, I was slightly disappointed. And I hate, I hate to say it. It was still a good book, still a good story, still good, like whatever also i feel like this could have ended with this book i don't know why there's a third book overall because like the initial the initial mystery has been solved um but i reading this book i i guess i was just slightly disappointed because i thought the puzzles would be a little bit more i don't know this is a little bit of a spoiler it seemed to have like this these sets of puzzles in this book seem to have a lot to do with their fathers and their parentage and so at one point I thought there was gonna be like a father reveal for her and I was supportive I was like yeah like let's bring her into this family but I think I would have liked the storyline of that of her like being related in that way to her rather than her just being this random girl um overall and it was like a sweet there was like a sweet moment with with that whole aspect of 
who her father was and who her father wasn't. I felt like I would have liked a more substantial tie between her and why she got this inheritance and stuff. Rather, literally, it just being, it just happened to be circumstantial and it just happened to be like a, a really strong coincidence. Those are all the books I read in August. And guess what, y'all? I finished my August TBR. Um, I'm gonna be honest, the only thing I didn't do was my buzzword because I could not find a book <laughs> with body parts in it that like I specifically wanted to read in August. So I'm just gonna make that up at some point this year and we'll figure it out. But I, other than that, like my initial TBR that I made I completed it, so I love that. And I completed my magical TB, my magical readathon TBR as well, so also love that. So I don't know. Again, I was on a roll in August. I don't know what I ate, don't know what I drank, but whatever it was. Hopefully, it repeats itself for the next few months. That would be great because I'm trying to get as much read as I can. So thank you guys for watching this far. If you've watched this far. <laughs> Um, if you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that in the comment section. Let me know what y'all have been reading this summer. Like some of your best books of the summer. Let me know what they were. And if you want to see more videos from me, hit that subscribe button. You are all sunflowers and wolf elements.